Thanks everyone for tuning into another newly listed on the CSE clip. And today I am talking to John Dwyer. John is the chairman and CEO of Wonder Gaming Corp, has recently listed with the Canadian Securities Exchange. John, thank you so much for taking the time to join me today. How are you? I'm, per I'm terrific. Thank you very much for having me. Perfect. John, I'm excited for this conversation. Um, why don't we begin by you talking to our viewers and audience about Wonder Gaming. What is the vision behind this company? So Wonder Gaming is critically focused on the notion that the future of the video game and gaming industry is rooted in the family. And so, you know, we work in an industry that has historically sought uh, revenue targets by virtue of its relationships with both endemic, but more importantly, non-endemic partners. So this is telcos and banks and large multinationals uh, uh, and, and a number of other industries across the board that find the constituency of nearly 2 billion people across the planet that game daily and wanna understand how to access them in a meaningful and more importantly, authentic way. And so we've chosen the verticals of loyalty and rewards as our first launch off point, we're going to be launching the first comprehensive loyalty and rewards platform in the esports and gaming realm uh, in Q3 of this year. But we've made some really interesting acquisitions along the way. We're the first publicly traded loyalty and reward company uh, in Canada with a fully built out NFT platform. We recently acquired Hot Dot Media, which has over 100 million active followers uh, across TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. So essentially what we're in the business of doing is capturing the audience of gamers and liaising and integrating them with the brands that are meaningful to them and, and essentially acting as a conduit. And, and we work not only with the brands, but with countless other esports teams and organizations in the space. John, what was the strategy from you and your team for taking Wonder Gaming public? We saw a lot of amazing companies in the space, both domestic here in Canada. And I think Canada really does punch above its weight on the global scale. Enthusiast Gaming is an incredible example of that, a company that we, we, we look up to and one that, uh, that I think is leading the way on the global scale. And so what's happening right now, whether it's in Canada domestically or we're looking across the planet, is that the world is starting to reconcile the fact that gamers are not stuck in the basement. Gamers are not a bunch of nerds anymore. Um, my business partner uh, always says, you know, there's two truths about our space and that it's there are far more females playing than you think. And our constituency, our audience is a lot older than folks would think. Yeah. And so that's a very interesting opportunity, I think, for a number of businesses. But we have a very kind of strict focus on how do we monetize and how do we provide savings for the gaming community, which is why we focused on the loyalty and reward space. So if you think about the landscape of some of the more professional teams, you've got 20 teams playing Overwatch and you've got 20 te uh, sorry, 12 te teams playing Call of Duty. And that's kind of where we started to look at the ecosystem. We're like, the esports world is now replicating uh, conventional sports. They're locating teams in their specific cities. They're having these huge follower groups and that's influencing all of their buying habits. That's influencing a number of ways in which they identify themselves personally. Because if you talk to gamers, they talk about themselves as gamers. It's an identity. I grew up skateboarding. My friends and I, we called ourselves skaters. That was a huge part of my teenage years. Yeah. That's something that's happening now with gaming, but it goes well beyond just the bracket of being a teenager. So we're harnessing the loyalty and rewards community to offer unique opportunities for brands to access the gaming community and for the gaming community to get great deals on the brands that they're already out there buying. John, what's your background? How did you get into this space? I actually previously worked uh, for Enthusiast Gaming. I came into the space uh, having been a huge gamer and, and, and sports fan. Prior to that, you know, I was a CEO of a few different businesses. I've been in everything from copper uh, to uh, uh, the medical and healthcare space to automotive safety brokerage and agriculture. So I've been an entrepreneur uh, since I started my career. This space is always something that fascinated me, but it was increasingly nascent and nobody really understood where the new verticals and opportunities to make money were going to reside. And so we started to see these, these fascinating pockets where the marketplace was starting to say, you know, there was an aha moment. 
where there was a legitimacy lent to the notion that gaming is now something that's transitioning into being, you know, uh, a phenomenon in the 21st century as a real marketplace. And I think that was the real catalyst. It was an opportunity to do something that I love, do something that you know, all the folks that I work with were, were you know, very much uh, uh, gamers. Most of our discussions happened you know, in terms of forward moving strategy while we're gaming. Um, and uh, so for us, it's just a fascinating opportunity to do something that we love. What about some of your team members? Are you able to comment on some of your key team members that you guys have put together to move this project forward? Sure. So uh, my business partner, Mike Cotton, uh, formerly, you know, founded the analytics department at the New York Mets, similar for the, uh, for the Rangers. He was there with them when they almost won the Stanley Cup, uh, you know, uh, has been very pivotal in, in the VC world. Um, and I was uh, lucky enough to pull him away from what he was doing to come and join me as co-founder uh, in our business. Our CFO, Stephen Brooks, is formerly the Senior Vice President of the Toronto Blue Jays and Head of Operations and the CFO of the Ottawa Senators. Uh, on our board, we have Sam Brooks, who's head of content for the National Basketball Association, Cyril Leader, who's a co-founder uh, and former President and CEO of the Ottawa Senators. So a real grouping of folks that are very endemic to the sports and esports world. Of the two companies we just acquired, um, the CEO of our NFT platform was the head of blockchain for, uh, for Ernst & Young. Uh, and our most recent acquisition, Hot Dot Media, uh, is our young genius, Adam Silverman, who we're very happy to add to the team. We've got some incredible announcements coming out over the coming days, if not weeks. Perfect. My next question was, you know, obviously there's passion in what you do in this space. You have a very strong team that you've put together. I was going to ask you, what are some of the factors you would say differentiate a company like Wonder Gaming from some of your peers? But I think you've just touched on that. Is there anything else you might want to add to it? I think the biggest, the biggest descriptor of our business is we're a utility player. We're the designated hitter one day, we're the shortstop, and then we're playing left field. We work with esports teams, influencers, uh, and the athletes themselves, as well as professional athletes. And a lot of that story is going to be told throughout the balance of the summer. And folks are going to see that we actually don't compete naturally with any of the, the existing um, folks that are central to our industry. We're a utility player to them. We're driving programmatic advertising for companies. We're working with businesses like Activision and Twitch to drive you know, very unique and meaningful content. But most importantly, we're bridging this world as well between conventional sports and esports. And that goes back to the original you know, thought that, that we started with, which is we believe that the future of the esports industry resides with the family. It's about eliminating the notion that gaming is taboo. The same way mom and dad play catch or kick a football or play soccer or whatever it may be with the kids, now they're playing video games. It's not meant to be the entirety of that relationship, right? Just the same way you don't play catch for eight hours a day, but the one or two hours you're doing that, similarly, you have an engagement with your kids uh, in a very meaningful way, doing things that are important to them. And I think what we're ushering in and we're helping to, I think, create some new normalcy around is the fact that gaming is not something that's negative for kids, but it's something that the parents need to be part of. Uh, and it's, it, it's a very unique opportunity for bonding. I think those are great points that you touched on, John. Um, so you did mention over the summer, you guys have a um, number of news releases that are gonna be announced and, and announcements that you'll be making. John, where can our viewers and listeners go to find more details about you, your team, your company, and some of the stuff you guys are working on? So on June 1st, we're going to be launching the first comprehensive NFT platform. It's called Meme Station. Uh, Meme Station is going to be uh, an e-commerce engine that allows folks to go on to purchase uh, very unique NFTs. Uh, as well as we've built what we believe to be the first indices that is actually tracking the sale of NFTs across the world and showing where we're seeing the balance of price and where equilibrium lies in what is what we believe to be a very powerful alternate asset class uh, that's going to become increasingly mature. Uh, beyond that, going into Q3, we're going to be launching GamingRewards.com. But of course, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, of course, you can follow us on our Twitch channel as well. I don't think it'd be fair if we ended this conversation without talking about this, but uh, NFT, the acronym, it's been all over recently. 
and everybody's talking about this. There's a lot of buzz around it. Can you maybe break down what an NFT is for some of our viewers and listeners who might not necessarily know? The best way for people to think about it is it's an alternative asset class, right? So whether you're purchasing a group of seven painting or you have a LeBron James rookie card or you're looking at some of the most meaningful memes, the, this is going to sound really obscure. Maybe some of your viewers will know it, but I believe it was yesterday. Um, a, uh, a meme clip of, uh, it's called Charlie bit my finger sold for, I believe 750,000 bucks and is yes. now going to be taken down off of YouTube as the purchaser of that NFT now holds provenance. So this is the really critical and I think fascinating piece about NFTs as an alternative asset class. And in terms of what we do, so it's all held on the blockchain and blockchain is fundamentally critical in terms of establishing provenance or that ownership. And then you can see the cycle of it grow in terms of where it's sold and who's holding what percentage of that ownership. What we do, which I think is very unique, is we're able to white label it. So with our new platform, which is launching May 1st, Meme Station, go check it out. Uh, folks will be able to, whether you're, uh, we do it on an ad hoc basis with an NHL player, NA, NBA player, or you know, use your imagination from there, or we're working with a, with a professional sports team an organization, we can uh, harness memes from the Toronto Maple Leafs in the 1950s. Wouldn't it be cool to get uh, some of the original footage from the very first uh, 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 Blue Jays baseball game at CNE Stadium? And you can let your imagination run from there. And this is probably the most critical piece is that we have a technology that can work with actual beyond the organization going to the league. So we can work with La Liga. We can work with Serie A, with the English Premier League, the NHL, the NFL, and actually harness uh, uh, um, an opportunity to engage with them to create NFTs across the entirety of not only just their present experience of players and games and so on and so forth, but actually going back in history. And so you have, again, this, this, this absolutely endless uh, marketplace to, to purchase assets that's really meaningful to them. At the end of the day, I think, you know, this is about the community of both sports and esports, and, and that's who we're here to serve. John, I look forward to watching you, your team, and your company grow as you move along this, uh, this, this route. And uh, I look forward to our conversation soon. Thank you so much for having us. And we're just delighted to be on the CSE. What an experience. Thank you again. My pleasure. Thank you for tuning in to another newly listed on the CSE. Please feel free to hit like and share this content and hit subscribe if you haven't already.